successful at home than on the road, or is that something you have to maybe kind of step away from the season to get some perspective? Yeah, I think we probably got to look at that when we get get out of the season. You know, it's hard to put a finger on that. You know, um, you know, it's hard. You know, we uh, in the Minnesota game felt like we did some pretty good things. You know, we. You know, we had some good drives that we didn't finish and in the first half on defense. We couldn't stop them on third down, but in the second half we did. So, you, you know, we, we just didn't put together the game, obviously. You know? and so whether that had to do with being on the road or not, I don't know. I don't, I don't see our guys acting any differently on the road. I just think that, uh, you know, again, we've got we've to continue to coach it better and figure out a, a better way to do it in the offseason. That's what we're going to try to do. Bill, when you talked earlier, about that question on the terms about not over coaching. When you guys right. as coaches are constantly talking about consistency and not turning the ball right on game day, it's not happening happening. What is you what what, are, what can you guys as coaches do? I and mean, what's the fine line? Where does it rest with the player? Where does it rest with you guys? What's that fine line of this balance as to what more you guys can stress to these players about yeah. this mistake? No, Willie, I think it's a good question. I, I think one of the things is some of them we look at and we say, you know, there's a couple times where the defense made a good play, you know, and maybe they maybe the guy caught a pass and turned and the ball was stripped right away and it was difficult for that guy to secure the football. But there's other times that it's just, you know, to me, a complete lack of focus. And it's not that, you know, we don't it's – it's not like we love the kid any less for fumbling. We just, we just try to stress, look, we've got a fo- – we can't – we can't go into playing a 7-2 and two Minnesota team and fumble the first play of the game. I mean, that doesn't bode well for the game. I mean, I know it's just the first play, but we've got to, like, take care of the ball. And so, you know, I, it's not yelling and screaming. Uh, what we did yesterday is we come in, and just like I do every Monday, come in and have the good, the bad, the ugly of the game on Saturday and show it to them. And, and uh, we don't yell and scream at them. We teach them. We love teaching them. We really enjoy coaching these kids, and so we just continue to teach them, continue to figure out better ways to coach them, and that's what we'll always do here at Penn State. Have you found this year that you've been using different techniques to try to find that answer, or has there any searches here? In certain instances, yeah, I would say that we have, uh, you know, like Zach's wearing gloves now, you know, so that's one, you know, that was something he asked me, you know, what do you think about that? I said, yeah, it makes you feel more confident. And hold on to the ball. I think one of the things with Zach, you know, a lot of it's been the ball's been in his left hand. Uh, so we've looked at that. You know, with Billy, you know, Billy's taking care of the ball better than he has in the past. And, you know, we fumbled that first one on, on Saturday. That's not good. Now, on the fumbled center quarterback exchange, you know, again, Christian and I talk about this all the time. When you're on the goal line, you're on a one yard line, and the center has to make a hard reach block to the left or to the right, it's like the golden rule of quarterback. You always have to stay with the center a little bit longer. That's the first thing you learn when you coach quarterbacks and when you play quarterback. So, uh, you know, he pulled out a little bit early, and, and that's why the ball's on the ground. I mean, to me, you know, we just have to execute better and emphasize that in coaching. But there are technical aspects to it, really, like you're saying, and that's what we try to coach. Bill, Allen's had such a tremendous year. <laughs> How would you evaluate the progress of the other receivers, Brandon, Richie, Gino? Have they made the kind of strides to make things as easy as they can for Christian? Yeah, you know, I think there's been improvement, Corey. I really do. I think that, um, uh, you know, Brandon has had some chances to make plays and probably wishes he made some plays. He works extremely hard. He's a, he's a good route runner, and um, he came out to practice yesterday and made some plays, you know. Um, you know, Richie and Gino, uh, you, you, you know, those guys are, are young receivers, and it's not the easiest thing in the world to come in here and just play receiver right away in any offense, not just the offense that we run. And, and they, they've improved every week. They work extremely hard. Uh, you know, I think for Richie, when you're a true freshman, it's hard. You know, when you you, you got to get your classes straight, you got a lot of things going on, and it's hard to always focus on improving on the field. you got to get your, your outside stuff straight, too. And so I think you'll see a lot of improvement in the offseason with those guys. Gino's a guy that will play more against Purdue. And, uh, you know, I think he's, he's a guy that we need to, you know, continue to try to get the ball to. And he's got to continue to be a better route runner and really work on that. And I, I know he'll do that. Well, I think after the second or third game, you said Christian evaluated his play at like a B or something like that. Um, through nine games, how would you evaluate his play for the season? And do you judge him differently after nine games than maybe after the first couple? Do you have to kind of make the curve at all? 
Yeah, no, and I, I should, you know, I really, I don't know if I gave it. Without putting on letter grade. Yeah, I don't, I don't want a letter grade. I mean, I just, I, I understand the question, I'll answer it, but, you know, that's just, I, I don't even think that makes sense, putting letter grades on players. But um, Christian has, in, in many, many ways, improved uh, every week. Give me an example. Minnesota, we're driving the ball. I think we had a third down in their territory. Uh, we called a play that required a check. We called, it required a check where he had to uh, use the tools in his toolbox to get the defense to show a little bit. And I've had uh, you know, guys at other places that I've been that could never do that. He did it. And so he checked the play, got us into the right play, but we didn't complete the pass. You know what I mean? So we got to take, okay, so we got that step done. It's all part of teaching. We got that step done. We got that step accomplished. Now the next time we do, now we got to execute all the way through. And then there's other times where he made some really good throws, some really, I mean, the, the curl route he threw to Zenilato on the two-minute drive there when we went two minutes, it was a great throw. Some of his deep balls that we didn't come down with were really good throws. Um, you know, other throws where we run little, our, some of our little bunch stuff, he's got to, understand there's a little bit of touch on that pass sometimes. So that's all part of being a, a young quarterback. And, and to me, I look at that and I say, you know what, He's gonna, he got better at that last night. He's going to be better at that against Purdue, and maybe even better against Nebraska, and then better against Wisconsin. You know, I just believe that. You know, and I really believe in this kid. And uh, I got a lot of belief in this kid. And, and I think he's going to be better and better. And, you know, we need him to be better against Purdue. And, and again, like I said, there's been a lot of good and there's been some, some things that we just need to take from this stage to that stage and now get it all the way to the next level. And that's what we're trying to do. Hey, Bill. Where's uh, Zach Zornak's confidence at after last week? Well, it's pretty good. You know, he rushed for 150 yards. Um, I thought he ran the ball really hard. I thought he really ran the ball well against Minnesota. Give him credit. I mean, he really did. We, you know, there was some good blocking. Um, so I, I think he's confident. You know, he and I talk every day. And, I think he feels pretty good about where he's at. Yep. And I will continue to rotate him and Belton in there. Uh, and Akil Lynch came back to practice yesterday, so we'll see how he's doing, too. Bill Allen Robinson this season has dropped a bunch of pass there. Yeah. I was just curious, I guess this is a two-part question. How does that kind of impact his overall ability to affect the defense as they kind of try to plan for him? And do you coach up a young quarterback like Chris? You kind of let him know, you know hey, well, that's, that's a scenario that can happen as well. But we can, Get that no doubt about it. It's a great question. We, we, when, when Allen gets doubled, you know, that really helped us in the running game against Minnesota because they had a high safety over the top of them to one side, and so now we're able to have one less guy to deal with in the running game to that side, so it helps there. And then you always have to coach the, the quarterback on, hey, look, if they take Allen away, here's your other options. And then when those guys are throwing the ball, they got to make plays on it if it's good for them. And so that's, you know, that's part of the process of teaching and, and uh, uh, getting the offense to improve, and that's what we're trying to do. But, yeah, when Allen gets doubled, it definitely, it, it, it's not a, uh, it hurts Allen because he's getting doubled, but, but it, it can help the rest of the offense. Bill, <clears throat> Purdue's been struggling. Um, going back to October 5th, they scored three touchdowns since October 5th. How do you make sure that the team has the same focus going into this week as you know if they're playing a team with a winning record? All right. Well, no, we don't have any problem focusing on Purdue. We, we uh, you know, we respect Purdue. Uh, coach Hazel, I think, is an excellent football coach. Just his first year there, he's putting in his his uh, you know offense, defense, special teams. He's you know working hard in recruiting and uh, got a lot of respect for Daryl. And so our guys are very focused on this game. I, I don't think it's with our guys. It's never a matter of of focusing on who the opponent is, it's it's not it has nothing to do with with records or anything else. It's about playing the best football we can play and trying to get better from the mistakes that we made last week. Hey, Bill, uh, I know earlier in the year, uh, I think maybe before the season started, you you had mentioned how at some of the earlier practices you you managed the roster, like if, especially veteran guys, you might give them maybe a lesser load or some days off because of the less depth. Now that we're just a couple weeks left, I mean, do you see those like those type of guys having like the energy level you want, and like ha has that been a successful strategy? And, and and how have you seen it if they are in fact a little more energetic? Yeah, I, I see um, 
the way that we've practiced, I think, has been good. I think, again, that's another off-season study to give you a better, more uh, specific answer on that. But I do see a lot of juice still with Daquan Jones or, or uh, John Urschel. You know, I, I see these guys that have played a ton of snaps for us, and there's other guys. I, I still see a lot of energy. And, you know, we'll, as, the, as it goes into November here, we're going to shorten practice a little bit and, and do, do some things at a faster pace. And, not have them out there till 6.30 at night, maybe have them out there till 6, get them back, get them something to eat, and get them studying again. So, uh, you know, that's something that we're going to continue to look at and, and strategize about. Coach Ray, on your left. Um, yeah, you have four state college high grads on your roster, the most of any high school on your roster. You know, that might you know, make sense given the proximity, but you just talked about the relationship you know, Penn State football has with state high. Yeah, we have. Uh, a really good relationship with State High. We we uh, we recruit there every time we can uh, have a period of recruiting where we can go by and visit schools. We we make sure that uh, State High is on our you know on our list of visits. I've been to the school personally, I think twice. Um, you know, so we we have a great relationship with them, and we always want to make sure that State College High knows that uh, there 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 will be spots on our team for. For, for State College high football players, no doubt about it. Uh, Bill, uh, with, with Ben Klein, uh, I believe you said a, a week or two ago that it would also require uh, off-season shoulder surgery yeah. again. Does he also need surgery? Yeah. To that too? yeah, so he'll have the pec surgery, I think, this coming week, and then he'll have the shoulder surgery down the road. Okay, well, he still has two seasons left with you guys. Right. I know he's obviously he's got to overcome a lot, but you know, what do you expect out of him? And, and you know, can you just kind of talk about yeah, well, I think, you know, with the surgical procedures that will take place, I think, number one, he can definitely come back from those. I really do. I think a lot of that has to do with, you know, the rehab and things. But I know, knowing Ben Klein, I know he's going to rehab. And I actually brought him in uh, yesterday and had this exact conversation with him about, hey, you know, we're looking forward to you coming back here uh, and, and being one of our leaders next year. and. Uh, I still want you around the program right now. So he's in the meetings. He's out of practice last night, and you know I, I look at Ben Klein as you know just a tough, you, you, you know tough kid, kind of like in the two years I've been here, kind of like in that Mike Yancich category. You know, just tough dudes that love football, love Penn State, and you know I would expect him to come back and play well for us. Coach, in this day and age, uh, big time recruits have a lot of exposure, but what? Adam and Chris were kind of the faces of the 2013 class for you guys, and they got asked so many questions after the sanctions after an O2 start last year. Is how do you think that helped the maturation process? That we've seen it from Christian, but Adam yeah. also helped him out as a special teams. Yeah, I think I think it, you know anytime you have to you know do this, deal with the media at a young age. I think the more you do it, the the, the better you get at it, right? You guys have noticed that with me, right? So. I'm just I'm kidding. <laughs> Holy smokes. <laughs> it's a joke. Um, I mean, come on, Neil. You didn't even laugh. <laughs> I can always count on you for it. But, but I do think that that helps. I, I think the one thing, too, to make clear, though, about that, and I, I think the question is a good one, we've got a lot of other kids in that 13 class that we think are pretty good. Uh, if you look at the off, I'll just, let's just talk about two positions. If you look at the offensive line, Okay, last night we had a developmental scrimmage. Uh, we ran about 35 plays. Andrew Nelson, Brendan Mann, and Tanner Hartman, I mean, they came roaring off the ball. Uh, and, and they were blocking on Garrett Sickles, Parker Cothran, and Curtis Cothran. And they were coming roaring off the ball. It was a very physical scrimmage. You know, it's, we have a lot of fun. We love, the kids love it. We love it. We crank the music. And so, you know, there's a lot of faces of that 13 recruiting class that I think that you guys will get to know over the next you know, four, four, four or five years or whatever it is.